Ross might be out. Taken comfortably, and that's a good catch in the deep. One run needed. This might run away to the boundary. Hello everyone. Welcome back to State Bat with Devesh. Um, this is now more than one year since I have started this program and I am very happy that I am getting good response. There are a few changes in the cricket uh, community and those are positive ones. Uh, so I would like to thank everyone for watching and giving me the encouragement. Uh, please keep watching my program. Uh, today I want to start with a very uh, controversial statement and because it is related to sports, the, that's why I wanted to start with those things because normally I don't speak about politics in this program, but today is the day when I thought that because it was done by a sports person, so I should start the program with that statement. So I'm, yes, I'm talking about Don Cherry uh, who gave a very controversial statement and I would not like to say he, if he is right or wrong, but the only thing I would like all of you to think whether he gave his statement with a factual data. If that is correct, then he should be not be condemned. If not, then you have all the right to condemn him. But coming back to cricket, uh, I would like to, I am very happy that two of very known cricketer of Canada has accepted my invitation and agreed to come to my program. Uh, as you know that this year was a very, very active one for cricket in Canada. Uh, there was tour in Namibia, before that cricket team went to Sri Lanka, then went to South Africa for a practice uh, tour and then from there they flew to South Africa where we know what happened that we uh, uh, missed the qualification. Um, and then from then we have GT20 uh, and it was a very, very popular one comparing to the last year. So we saw some progress there and some of our players did pretty well in that tournament. Um, and then there was uh, Bermuda, then there was tour to Malaysia and uh, uh, then to Dubai. And now as all of you know that uh, we have a tour, ongoing tour going in uh, St. Kitts. Uh, so that is why I have invited uh, two of the uh, main player from Canada, Cricket Canada national team. Uh, who I thought that would be able to give more details and can share their experience that uh, why we lost so many important tournaments and why we did uh, our player did more than what expected was expected in GT20. So let us start and uh, let me introduce not actually these two players are not uh, need any introduction from me. Uh, all of you know uh, I am talking about uh, Rijwan Chima, our star player and our premier fast bowler uh, Cecil Parvej. So please welcome them. Uh, hello guys, how are you? Thank you. How are you? And thanks for uh, accepting my invitation and agreeing to come and talk to my, uh, talk to me in my show. I will start with you Rijwan, why you are wearing this uh, cap like this? <laughs> are you in a destructive mood today? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this is, I always uh, wear hat and uh, I think that's uh, how I roll around. Mm -hmm. Yes, the style. So nothing to nothing to do with what is coming <laughs> in this show. Okay. No, no. Okay. So let's start with uh, GT20 else, or not? Before that, we went to uh, Namibia, and uh, you were not part of it, right? So, what do you think? What went wrong? Um, I think uh, um, if you if you see it, um, it's pretty much every time is the same story happening mm -hmm. and uh, I think w we spoke about it before um, that team was not um, picked properly. Mm -hmm. So that was uh, the case in, in, in that tour I guess uh, you know no, your team is not balanced enough uh, in terms of all department. Mm -hmm. So it is tough to obviously uh, win tournaments. Uh, so when you say team selection you say that team was not properly balanced. So there were too many openers in the team. Yeah, that was the that was the problem in that team, yeah. The major problem. Yeah. But Cecil coming to you, um, and I think Cecil has come to my program for the first time, so welcome. Thank you. And I am very happy that you agreed to come and speak. 
because I really find very difficult the, uh, to find this quality in national pair. I keep on inviting a lot of players, but they shy away. But thanks for inv for accepting my invitation. So coming to the Namibia, you were there in the tour, right? If I'm not wrong. So inside being the ins you know uh, the part of the team, what did you feel that Couple you went to the tour? <laughs> you went to the you went to you didn't went to Sri Lanka for the uh, preparation tour, but then you went to South Africa, and from South Africa you went to uh, Namibia, and as per president own online feed, he said everything was going right, the training was out class, out of the world, great coach, everything was fine, he invested a lot of money and you guys came to South Africa and then from there Namibia. The moment you guys landed in the Nam Namibia, everything started going down the hill. Is that the problem? Uh, the, I think uh, I was, since I was there, I can tell you two things went wrong in the tournament. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the coach first. Mm -hmm. He might be a brilliant coach, I'm sure, no doubt about that. Mm. But once you bring someone like two months before such a big event, tournament, mm. chances are the coach doesn't know the roles properly. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know my role properly. He doesn't know where I fit in the team. He doesn't know where each batsman fit. He will only go by what he is told. Right? Mm. So mm. I won't blame the coach, but yeah, bringing a coach two months before such an important tournament, I think that was first wrong move. Mm. Second. As uh, Rizwan said, the team was in balance. When you go in such an important tournament with six opening batsmen and your middle order is very weak and mm. no batting strength in the low uh, order, I think you will struggle eventually. Correct. So I think that's what happened. We had too many opening batsmen in the team. I mean, all those guys were talented, no doubt about that. But when you send an opener in the middle and ask him to do a job that he has never done, mm. chances are he's going to struggle. And that's so exactly all you, what happened. So all you will do is destroy the career of young people. Uh, players exactly and that's what we saw what happened with Babindu was very very sad like I saw that kid is struggling uh, in the middle order and the lower lower order because he's a genuinely a uh, opener and his style of batting is not fit for those kind of role uh, if you, sorry I'm just cutting if you noticed one particular player I will tell you just an, as an example Hero Patel all the games he batted low order mm -hmm. like number uh, low order I think seven eight nine mm -hmm. Where did he bat the last game? Open. Mm. So until the very last game of the tournament, the roles were not defined. Defined. Because the coach did not know. No about He was only told certain thing and he had no choice but to go with whatever he was told from back home or the captain or whoever was feeding him. I have no idea, but mm. I think these were few of the things. So I like within two or three minutes, we uh, did our dichotomy and we listed two, three major issues, right? But why, you know, our president came online and he said that soon they will do an inquiry and will figure out what happened and what went wrong. So did he ever call you to talk to you about the tour, Namibia tour and find out what happened? I was never contacted. No, never nobody contacted. asked me um, okay. my report. Nobody asked me any questions. So this is the first time someone is asking me. So okay, no, because I saw that online feed where he was promising that he will do, he will conduct an inquiry. So I'm just asking. Mm -hmm. So there was no contact, nothing. Nobody talked to you about the tour. Absolutely. Okay, no. good. So I don't know what to add here, but anyway, if president has promised, we'll hope that someday he will come out with a report. Rajman, coming to you, mm -hmm. how was your experience playing with some of the greats in uh, GT20? <coughs> definitely, you know, um, I've been uh, to few the events like that, and then obviously it's always a uh, uh, good feeling playing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I don't want to say we shared. Uh, it's it's good to share a uh, dressing room with those players because that's. Uh, not what I was looking for. I wanted to obviously go there and do well for mm. myself. Mm. And it's not like I uh, uh, was so happy to be just part of that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's obviously for some of the youngsters, it's, it's, it's a big thing to be just out there. But mm -hmm. obviously, you know, you know, we had made our names like that before. Mm. And I've been to tournaments like that. So I, I wanted to do well in that. Mm -hmm. That uh, was the goal. Unfortunately, I got injured after the second game. So, yeah. but it was definitely a very good thing for the Canadian players. Definitely, mm -hmm. you know, it's mm -hmm. it's uh, you know, and good to see 
what uh, pleasing to see was uh, you know our players are doing well in that tournament so mm -hmm. that was uh, really really um, you know m m the thing really made me happy because uh, all these players people were thinking about you know these Canadian players blah blah blah, blah here and there but they all did well they all yeah did fairly well yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, it was really unfortunate because the way you batted in that match where you were hitting clean sixes and uh, Soeb Malik was with you right on okay. the other side and I saw that he was appreciating all of your shots yeah. but then you got out and then after that you got injured and then I think you played after a couple of matches after that or not? No I, d I didn't play after that because yeah. you know, sh tournaments are very short and yeah. injuries obviously takes time Yeah. Then, um, and I have t uh, a uh, Canada tour coming up for Bermuda, so I didn't want to take any risk. Risk, okay. So I told them not to. Not to, okay. And what happened, uh, what was your experiences like? GT20, you did uh, pretty well. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, I gave you a good uh, points, but uh, did you think that you met your expectation or you fall short? I think I did pretty good, considering that first uh, Cricket Canada hasn't even hadn't even given my name in top 50 players. So I was very disappointed there. Mm. So if, uh, I was a late inclusion in the team, so I had an extra uh, point to make right there. So, so how did you manage that back door entry? I mean, it's it's a long. Uh, it Story? was a struggle to okay. get back into uh, into my name in GT20, but eventually I got in, and uh, mm. uh, luckily, thank God, I got a chance to play all the games. I all mean, right. obviously, even uh, you play among such big players, you learn a lot. So when I went to the practice, obviously, coaching staff, they saw something, so they gave me a chance to play, and uh, especially opening bowling for Brampton Wolves, uh, it, mm -hmm. it was big for me. Mm -hmm. So, and I think I, I think I did pretty well uh, overall in Canada. I think in all the fast bowlers from Canadi Canadian uh, players, I was the most economical in the entire tournament. So mm -hmm. I think I did pretty well. Uh, then bowling in some of those crunch moments in the death overs and uh, I think I, uh, overall I think I'm very happy with my performance. And you got a lot of popularity also because I was watching some of the videos like it was it was having like close to a million uh, hits. So Susan is obviously a prince of Brampton. So yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, Playing for Brampton Wolves, yeah, yeah that yeah. really helped too. And so so <coughs> so is true for you also, uh, Rizwan. I the the sixes you may uh, you know you hit were one of the cleanest in the tournament and a lot of people have watched those videos. So congratulations both of you Thank for you. Uh, generating a lot of interest in Canada mm -hmm. and I hope that coming in coming season you will do better and better. Uh, now let's go to the bitter one. <laughs> After GT20 what happened then? Then you went to Bermuda yeah. and you could <coughs> not be part of that because of your personal reason. How was the experience playing in Bermuda? <coughs> uh, experience was all right, you know, as I, I, we always go to these tournaments and obviously the, the competition there wasn't that that hard. Mm -hmm. um, only uh, team who before going in there was worried was uh, USA and and they had pretty bad tournament. Mm. So um, I don't think there was any other issue for us to we, you know, did pretty well, beat all the teams, mm. won all games, so it was fairly uh, easy one for us. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but obviously when you win, it's easy. But I mean, after you know, when when we would a, a beat twice USA, mm. that was kind of uh, yeah uh, bad for I think to see that team which we're hoping will give us a tough time and then we're just everything else was kind of walk over. Yeah, so I want to ask this I'm very curious to understand because when you have such a easy tournament like yeah. Bermuda it was like walk in the park right there was no any fierce competition right so did uh, the team as a team unit you guys do any intro introspection and say okay look we are winning good but these are the problems still there and we should addressing this problem. Was coach addressing to those issues or we were just going gaga? I think uh, this is a very good point. Uh, um, even if the competition is not good enough or it's, I, I would say it's uh, easy, we should always look how we're doing, mm -hmm. what we need to be good, what we need to do well. Mm -hmm. and. 
I was actually pointing out every single time this is okay this competition may be not the one we're going to go to mm -hmm. that's going to be different mm -hmm. that's going to be tough so let's make sure we do stuff which will help us to compete there mm -hmm. okay this will go through mm -hmm. but w what is the ultimate goal is to go to the world cup mm -hmm. for that we need to go there and beat those teams so did you see any plan out there th which coach was discussing or team managers were discussing well um, um you know I w obviously i was not part of that uh, plans mm. and uh, uh, i didn't know if they had some sort of plan mm. because um, uh, when you see a different team playing and different batting order is going in every game mm. that kind of tells you there's no plan mm. i um honestly speaking and that's you know even you see a uh, canada games all of the games there were every every time there was a different setup different bowling different batting plans different people going in and out so there's we weren't even settled down even under the tournament so but luckily you guys won right yeah, so you win and things didn't come out but you know we should have learned even though we know we're winning but still uh, we should have you know look into those areas mm. like what's going on we're not even settled down yet we need to make sure you know we, okay those tournaments not you you playing one guy now and the second one in the next game and all those things so, so you need to be settled down before I going i want in. to understand two things as sisal also pointed out that you know in uh, namibia tour there was no fixed role because coach didn't know most of the players uh hopefully he must be aware of couple of players but not all the players because t somebody from the management told me that no no this guy used to coach some of the players so he knows the team so i don't know it's not only it is important to know your own team but also the opposition and who were the opposition in namibia the us their main opposition were that so if you are not if you are in the subcontinent is you know it is not acceptable or it is not expected to know everybody in north in, in north america right so that was the issue so there was no role fix so you also experienced that in namibia right so and do coach or captain comes to you guys and say look no matter what happens you are going at this down and you are going to play 3 to 4 matches do um, you get get those confidence from captain and coach no i did not I'll be very honest with you and I know some people might not like this. Mm -hmm. After the first game, mm -hmm. I was m made to feel like I don't know how to play cricket, how to bowl. I'll be very simple. After giving all these years, that's literally how I was made feel because the way they treated me, like they kept telling me Who? The captain uh, no, coach? the coach, I will say the coaching, the whole uh, coaching staff mm -hmm. uh benched me after one game. The, I wouldn't even say that was a bad performance, but they benched me after that. Mm -hmm. And after that they dropped me again for the second game and there was no explanation they kept telling me uh, you should I, when i asked for explanation explanation they said oh you need to ask so and so when i went to that person they said it wasn't my decision you need to ask so and so so when they can't even take the responsibility you know that there's something wrong you know they're not dropping you because of your performance but there's something else going on in the background so anybody who is uh, watching this program i keep on telling this people that there what there is needed is accountability and transparency and as you can see if the players doesn't get the confidence from the team management there it it will affect their performance so coming back to another two uh, so namibia was debacle and we were promised that we will come out with a complete explanation what went wrong but so far nobody contacted you so, so forget about the results and uh, you know any explanation so i think uh, yes. uh, just want to add something in there explanations are going to be they will come behind the curtains they go there and bitch about players mm. they will say something or oh, the reason we didn't give chance to cecil because he done that mm. he was not, he was that he was that so it's never a really a real issue comes out mm. they always made you know wanted to say about you what they wanted to say yeah this thing certain things they say about you to put you down in front of other people mm. to about in front of selectors Mm -hmm. So they all everything is behind the scene is something else always. Yeah. So I don't really uh even if the report comes out I don't feel that's going to be very Helpful. much
I think it will be transparent a anyway. Commendable thing if the report ever comes out. Yeah, which even I doubt, if it comes out, it, which it I won't doubt, be. Uh, yeah, it won't be. But even if it comes yeah. out, I won't be surprised uh, if they say it was all the players who failed there. Yeah. Right. Yes, and I understand. And as being a player, and and especially the one who was in the media, I take responsibility for certain mm -hmm. things. Right. That yes, we as a team, the players obviously Fail. did not perform yeah. pr uh, to the expectations. But you can't blame everything to the players. But I will not be surprised if this management comes up with the report and say it was the players who failed. And that's right. what they will and try to do. And that's the only do. reason. They, someone needs to take the responsibility yeah. for the things they messed up in the yeah. background as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's not what you just see on the ground. Yeah. There's a lot of things that happen in the background. They need to take responsibility for that. As you know that a lot of interesting conversation is going with Rijwan and Cecil. And uh, unfortunately today we have to end here. And uh, there are so many things we need to discuss. So we have extended this program into two episodes. So today we are uh, ending here. and. Uh, We'll see you with more conversation and more topics, controversial topics in the next episode. This might be out. Taken comfortably. That's a good catch in the deep. One run needed. This might run away to the boundary.